to see everybody. This is a, a joyful thing to be together. We are grateful for your time to be here and to share this time of celebration as we get ready for Thanksgiving and all of the joy that follows that. Uh, the Advent season is right upon us. Sneak up on me this year. Or what am I saying? It sneaks up on me every year. Every year I think, oh, I'm going to be so organized this year, and uh, then I get caught by surprise. But here it is, right on us. So thank you for being here today. A couple of things to highlight. Uh, there is, sign the season, a pink flyer in your bulletin for ordering poinsettias to help decorate our church. Uh, we will begin the decorating of the church after worship next week. Uh, after the Sunday service, we'll start putting all our decorations out. Poinsettias come, of course, later, but you can place your order in this white box in the front uh, to help honor a loved one or, uh, or just to help decorate the church. We uh, also have uh, the green sheets are your commitment cards for supporting the church next year. I'm not going to harangue everybody or spend a lot of time exhorting. You know the need of the work of the church in this community, all the things that we do to support our community and help make disciples of Jesus Christ. I would ask you to do what you can to be of help and make this a time of, of prayer for you. Uh, we have gift tags for our Christmas available from Dee. Dee is in the very back there. She has the tags in hand. So you can help uh, provide gifts for uh, kids in our community and for seniors. I hope you'll see the after the service today. Uh, Thanksgiving baskets will be uh, assembled and delivered this week. So our, our sanctuary will be full of uh, food bags and, uh, and turkeys over the next several days. Uh, there's still a little bit of time to bring in Thanksgiving type food. Uh, it could be stuffing and cranberries and vegetables and things. Yes? It'll be just, the food, we'll be doing it in the morning and it'll be given out tomorrow night. So it's just for tomorrow. So it's just for tomorrow. So you got you got to get it in this afternoon. If you're going to bring it in anything and you haven't done it yet. So hurry to get the Thanksgiving food in. Thanks to everybody who has brought in coats and the clothes and food for that. Um, our ecumenical Thanksgiving service is Wednesday evening at the Presbyterian Church, which is right up the hill directly behind you. Uh, it's going to be a great service. There's going to be a combined choir from our area, heavily represented by our choir, which is the best in the area, I think. And uh, I hope you will come to that service if you can. Church office will be closed for the Thanksgiving holidays, of course. Uh, Marsha and I will be away during the week this week, from Monday through uh, early Saturday. Uh, we'll be back for next weekend, and I look forward to seeing you then. So we're going to go out and see our uh, uh, kids and our grandson out in uh, uh, Minnesota. So keep us in your prayers as we travel and everybody else who is traveling for this holiday season. Any other announcements you want to highlight? I uh, just wanted to share with you all that this past week we've uh, had some very exciting news at the Skylands Outreach Depot. We've been three and a half years struggling with this uh, unheated space down in Franklin, and we are going to be moving into the Andover United Methodist Church. They uh, used to have a preschool there that's no longer in business, and we're getting a really big classroom, and Nancy Cook uh, says we can use some of the other rooms. So on December 8th, I think we have a crew that are kind of making the move. So this is really exciting. Now we can finally really get going and really promote it because we can be there year round and there's a bathroom and heat and it's, it's really good. So anyway, as soon as we get moved, then we're going to start collecting for another Encore kit. But we got to get moved first. So. That's great and exciting. Do we not love our choir and Barbara? And Sharon. Yes. Today is the last day for placing your Gertrude Hall candy orders. So if you haven't done so yet, if you think, well, maybe, you know, maybe I should have some on hand for the mailman or the neighbor, now today's the day to order them. So please do so because the choir needs. Some new songs to sing. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Any other announcements? Let's prepare our hearts to worship God.
please stand if you're comfortable doing so as we call each other to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is the Lord who made us, and we are His. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to God and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. Please remain standing to sing. Come ye thankful people, come. Found in the United Methodist Hymnal, number 694. Things would you celebrate today? 
Christ saw something the other night that he wanted to mention. Isn't that neat? What else can you celebrate? What else is going on in this place? Yes. Amen. How exciting. Wonderful news. What a celebration. So it was a great dinner. We really appreciate it. Um, I had a joy. This young man that, that was uh, 12 years old and suffered twice. The page is in our choir now. Several birthdays going, so let's let's say happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. One last little joy. The, the, the baptism we had last week was so much fun for me. If you weren't here, the baby, uh, little, little Trevor was crying and crying and crying all through the whole first part of the service. And uh, we, we came up in front and we're reading the liturgy and he's crying and crying. And then I said, well, let's, let's see how it goes. And he handed him over to me and he stopped right then. And everyone went, oh! And it was like, you know, calming the wind of the waves, you know, or something. Except that I know what really happened is he leaned into my ear and burped. <laughs> and then he went, oh. <laughs> and everything was okay. So I thank God for that burp. <laughs> okay, let's continue our celebration. We celebrate our thanks to God. Give thanks to the Lord, sung by the Sussex United Methodist Choir.
Please listen for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures. So let, today, let us read together the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He made me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff shall be served. Thou art so that evil before me, in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A word from God and from the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand to sing if you are comfortable doing so. The Lord, the Lord, my shepherd, uh, United Methodist Hymnal number 136.
So it's not part of the trick again. They used to say, well, if you would take it and try to pull, whoever got the longer piece would have good luck. Remember that? Pull. Pull. You got the long, the short piece. Okay. So what did that tell you? One of the things that that shows you, I think, sometimes that I learned this trick. After a lot of, I'm doing this a lot of times, my brother and I would pull as hard as we could. And I realized that whoever was pulling harder, that side would break first. And leave the other side as the longer side. So now you know. <laughs> so try this out. If you have a turkey this week, don't pull as hard as the other person and you get the longer piece. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? So whoever grabs the most, whoever wants the most, whoever takes more for themselves, ends up with less. So it's a sign, maybe a sign, that we should be generous to other people and give them, now maybe that's what you were doing, you were going to give me the bigger piece, which was really generous. I like that. I appreciate that. So it just is a sign that when we're giving thanks, it's a chance for us to be generous to other people. And the more generous we are, the more good luck we get. Let's pray. God, we thank you for everything. We thank you especially at Thanksgiving for your love for us, who surrounds us all the time. No matter what we have, no matter how much money we have, no matter how much food we have, no matter how big a family we have, you love us all the time. And you help us to love other people all the time, too. We thank you for that and give you our praise forever. Amen. Okay, thank you so much. So much fun, isn't it? It's one of the happiest times of the year, I think, because it's all family, all together. It's food, all the foods we love, all the things we love to share, all of the ways we like to just, just enjoy each other's company and appreciate all the gifts that we share. God has given us so much, but the real gifts of importance are not so much things as love. And this psalm reflects that so well. This famous beloved psalm that may or may not have been written by David. It's very hard to tell. In the original uh, scripture, all of the psalms that say, of David, the Hebrew could be of David, for David, by David, about David, to David, because all the pronouns are the same thing. You have to tell from context. It doesn't really matter. It certainly fits David's life, though, doesn't it? Because you have all these images about shepherd and images about somebody being taken care of and in the life of luxury and being safe from enemies. They're all put there together. The first images you know are the famous ones about God taking care of us, taking care of the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd. The images, I'm like a sheep. I can be confident that the Lord is going to lead me where I should go, take care of me, give me the food and the water that I need, keep me safe, even in the darkest, most dangerous place, even in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear nothing because you, God, are with me. Then the image shifts to the image of a banquet. It's not a sheep at the banquet. It's a person clearly at the banquet. When you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over, cup overflows. The last part is easy to get. The overflowing cup makes sense as, well, first, any kid loves a mess, I suppose, but it also means that there's so much generosity that there's no limit to the food and drink you can have, the joy you can have. Sounds like a big Thanksgiving dinner, doesn't it? Or a meal at a fancy, fancy restaurant where the, the waiters are just standing by waiting for you to take the slightest sip out of your glass so they can run and fill it again. That's luxury. It's wonderful hospitality that doesn't stop. There's plenty to eat and drink. The oil on the head is a little more confusing. In ancient times, everybody's hair was scruffy and knotted and dirty. And to make it smell nice and easy to comb, oil was a great luxury. 
prepare oil for your guests. That was really being kind and hospitable. And then you were safe someplace you were wanted. It makes perfect sense to us in that sense that this is an image of a banquet at which we are welcome. We are safe. We are home. We are home in God's presence like a college kid back from a tough semester. Home in the lap, in the bosom of our family and our loved ones and able to share that joy. That's the way we want all our families to be. That's the way we want our church to be. We want to be welcome. We want to be loved and appreciated and safe and home. Then there's this odd image. You will put a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now what's that about? The first image I get is this sense of, of somebody like King David who has been surrounded by enemies all of his life and has always been in danger. And here he is, God has honored him so much that he is in a place of safety and his enemies can't do a darn thing about it. He's given this big banquet and now all they can do is just watch. And they can't hurt him. So even when they're right there, they can't hurt him. That's that safety thing again. It is wonderful to feel at home when we know we are safe. We are safe. But maybe, just maybe, there's a little more to it, a little twist. I keep thinking about this because it's still a kind of a nagging image. It seems strange to invite enemies to a banquet to make them just stand there and watch. What if, what if this table that is set is not for the enemies to watch, but the enemies to join the meal? What if the enemies are invited to be in this banquet too? They still can't hurt. They still can't harm, but they're in the banquet. What is it like to sit down at a banquet with your enemies, to have to dine with your foes, the people who don't like you, who don't care about you, that you can't get along with? I don't know about you, but I've known a lot of people over the years who were really nervous about going home for holidays with relatives. I knew people in college, especially, who just dreaded going back to spend Thanksgiving with their parents because they just couldn't seem to get along at that age. They would, they would go there and there would be all this tension. Their parents would be giving them Greek, your hair is too long, you're wasting all that money at school, you're not getting good grades, what's the matter with you? What are your plans? You look so shiftless and useless. And they just felt that tension. Worried about it. I've known people that dreaded going to be with their in-laws for a holiday because they never felt worthy. They were there, and their in-laws would say, I don't know why she married you in the first place. You'll never amount to anything. Or, I always try to fix a nice meal for my Johnny. He says, you never fix lunch for him. What's with that? All those kinds of tension bubbling just below the surface make a time of tension and anxiety and worry. It doesn't have to be mortal enemies for people to feel nervous or frustrated or worried about dining with somebody they don't think likes them. What would it be like, though, to really dine? I think maybe the thought here is that God's grace is so great, God's love is so overwhelming, that it fills us with so much love that we can do that. We can pull it off. We can dine even with an enemy, even with an in-law who hates us, or a spouse who is frustrated with us, or a parent who is annoyed at us, and still let that frustration and anguish roll off our backs and give nothing back but love. That we can sit with somebody who totally disagrees with our politics and is have a totally different idea about the meaning of the last election and still love them and still care about them and still share this banquet feast with them. What the 
put that in light, wouldn't it make for a different world if we could sit down with people who are totally different, who disagree with us on everything, and still love that? Maybe that makes some sense, a special sense out of that last line in the psalm. Because it always has struck me that it meant, you know, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I always think what that means, surely God is always going to take care of me. Surely God will always love me and I'll be surrounded by God's love and mercy all the days of my life. And that's a wonderful thing, don't get me wrong. Maybe there's another twist to it on top of that. That because of that love and grace and mercy of God, I can exude love and grace and mercy in everything too. Even to the point of sharing good times with people that I don't normally get along with. And love and mercy will just trail behind me wherever I go. Like pig pen trailing dust. <laughs> Right? Or Hansel and Gretel trailing breadcrumbs. Or kids I know trailing cookie crumbs everywhere we go. <laughs> Goodness and mercy just seem to fall around behind us. Wherever we go, we leave that legacy. All the days of our life, we leave that legacy of love. Because that's really what Thanksgiving is about. It's not about the turkey at gut level. And it's not about just saying thank you for all the stuff we have. We have food and clothes and safety and, and nice family and all those things. Those are all good. But many people don't have those things. That doesn't mean God doesn't love them too. The real thing about Thanksgiving is God's love and being grateful for that and sharing that gift with everybody else. It is love that is a blessing, not the stuff, not the stuffing. It is love. And that is something we can all be grateful for, and that is something we can all share. So let goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. We will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I'll leave time in the prayer also for us to lift up other prayers of joy and concerns. So let's offer our hearts to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this day and for your many blessings in our lives. Especially we thank you for your love and grace that surround us always. We ask your special care this week for all those who need you all those who lift up hands in prayers, all the joys that we shared and mentioned earlier, and all these concerns that we have on our hearts that we say out loud now or silently in our hearts. And we pray with gratitude as your children, the word you taught your disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Every week we send out our community crosses as a sign of God's love and presence. We have this note back from uh, Barbara Cook and John Wetzel had the cross this week. Dear church family, thank you so much for the community cross. It was a great comfort to us in the loss of our brother Ray, knowing all our church friends were praying for us. Thank you again, Reverend Dan and church family. God bless Barbara Cook and John Wetzel. Where should we send the crosses this week? Okay, we'll send to the, to the Burns is one there, they may already have headed up north for the funeral. I can get to them that. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are always with us in good times and bad. We pray that this cross will be a sign of your presence and love. 
We also pray that it will be a sign of our prayers that we send to our village in Jesus' name. Amen. We shall bring our gifts and our offerings to our churches for praise and honor. and words. 
May you guide us so that we can bring you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now let's show our gratitude in song as we sing, Let All Things Now Live. Number 2008, that's in the faith we sing. time and place to love and serve the Lord in all that we do without any worries and without any fears because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, the love of God the Father, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>